Hi everyone, Paul I say and welcome to part 4 the Tamiya 124 Ford Focus RS WRC car build. So today we're going to try and get it finished ish. Um, we've got fi final touches to do, a bit of polishing, what have you, sanding, and some final bits to put in place. Yeah, anyway, um, we're not going to waffle on, let's just get in with the build and let's get cracking. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, straight in and we're on to the clear part. So we've got some clear lights to fill in with some clear paints. Um, because of the setup of the focus rear lights, it's incorporated into the rear window on this. So we need to do the clear orange indicators, which are ever so slightly defined on the rear glass. Let that dry and then do the red uh, infill around the edge, then mask off the window and spray the window black itself. So we've got some Tamiya LP53 clear orange uh, and LP52 clear red. We've got a Winsor Newton brush and we're just going to very carefully paint the indicators in following the outline that's uh, imprinted onto the plastic parts. Um, being a lacquer, it does dry quite quick, kind of self levels as well. So we'll leave half an hour to dry and we can come over and do the red. So load up your brush, don't put too much on, but you need enough on there to get it in and let it flow. You want this stuff to self level. So um, brush it on, let it self level, leave it to dry. You could, of course, mask it up, make a mask to shape for the uh, indicator itself, the turn signal, uh, and then mask and spray the red. But for me, um, this is the easy way to do it. It's quicker, looks just as good in my opinion. And uh, yeah, it's a simple job to do. Just be as neat as possible. Don't get paint everywhere. Certainly don't go in any part that you want the window clear or black. Um, it's like colouring him, uh, keep in the lines, and you'll end up with a much neater finish. And then coming to an end, as you can see, we're just going to very carefully infill around the orange. Now, if you put too much of this on, it's going to pool, so you may have to move it around a few times. You may have to do a second coat. It's just one of those things. Uh, you can play that by, well, play by ear, see how it goes. Window masks come with a kit, luckily, so we're going to mask off the front screen, and then we can then mask off the side windows. So, as with these masks, they either go on first time perfectly, or you're taking it on and off about 40 times before you finally get it in place. And luckily, this one's gone on first time. There we go. Not too bad at all. So, get it in place. I'm keeping the clear parts on the sprue for strength and handling for now. And once you're happy that it's in place, if you've got to pull it back, do so very gently. As you can see, the window does flex. And then burnish it down with your finger. And then I like to get a clean cotton bud and burnish down all the edges to ensure we don't get any paint bleed. And we end up with a nice paint demarcation around the windows. So nice to get the paint masks included. Not every kit comes with them. And you will appreciate it when they do. Um, so for some of the kits that don't come with them, there are um, sources out there. You can get them from Hero Boy sells them decal cast and the like uh, but more and more kits these days are coming with them and they are a godsend definitely a blessing to have side windows masked up as well make sure you get the correct side refer to instructions all these are done from the inside so make sure you are spraying the right side been there done it and sprayed the wrong side before doesn't look as good certainly doesn't work as well our clear red and orange have dried now on the rear window so we're going to mask off the center we'll leave that to properly dry overnight and then we can mask off where we painted red and orange for when we come to paint the black for the window and again you need to get it on first time luckily nearly every one of these went on first time but do make sure you burst down the edges gently i like to use a cotton bud you can use your finger a rounded over cocktail stick wherever you've got a hand We've got several parts to clean up and mount. So we've got this front splitter here as well. 
just needs a sprue locator point sanding off. We've got some window wipers to do. We've got the towing eye to do as well. A few different components to do. So using a combination of thinny sticks and the buffer polisher from Ultimate, quick, easy cleanup, get it all buffed and polished up and cleaned. And then we can mount them all ready for primer. So combination of white tack, clips, and say glue will help with mounting the parts. And like I say, we've got some thinner parts like these window wipers, which are very, very delicate. They will snap if you're not careful. So pay attention to what you're doing um, and just take your time with it all. And you'll be just fine. So like I say, a few parts to clean up. Not a lot left. We've done most of that last time. Um, so it's just the finishing touches. And sadly, we are going to have a few issues at the end, but we'll get to that when we need to. For now, wing mirrors, I'm going to paint these with the pen, uh, with the Molotow pen, chrome. Just get it on there, get it to self-level, put it to one side, let it dry, and that will do us on this. So interesting to see um, how this dries over non-primed surface. I've not used it over non-primed yet, so we'll see how that goes. Now, the kit comes with Tamiya's typical mesh, with the grills, and you get little life-size uh, templates in the kit. So you cut them out the instructions, Cut them to size, and I like to put them on the part like this. Use my Tamiya decal scissors, line it up, get it all nicely straight on the edges. There we go. And then hold it and carefully cut around. You don't have to be exact. This is all going underneath. Um, the only one that needs to be pretty precise is the front grill because of the way it fits in. It's sitting around the locating points that the chassis fits in. So try and be as neat as possible and get them in. And then here we go. So there's all three templates done. Put those to one side for safekeeping, just in case we need them again. And we've got a bit of spare material there. Always keep the spare mesh. You never know when it'll come in handy. And then we can get the Ford logo sprayed up on this front one. I was lucky to be sent a few masks from a good buddy, Gary Constable. Uh, I got some Peugeot ones and some Ford ones. So I have this Ford brass template. So we're going to line it up, get it centered onto the grill, and then use some masking tape to tape it down. And then we can spray some Tamiya White Primer through, and that'll do the job of uh, putting the Ford logo on the grill. So line it up, grab a couple of pieces of tape, and get it all lined up. Get the edges both down, make sure it's straight, keep looking at it and checking it. Uh, like I said, we'll stick the edges down, and then we'll fill around the edge to get it all masked off ready. And like I say, a few light passes and some Tamiya white primer or a white paint equivalent. And that will inlay that nice Ford logo on the front. And it does look really good. It's a nice touch to do. Obviously, there's no provision in the kit to do this. Although it does show um, it on the uh, template. So, a bit of a shame. Even just a decal would have done. But nice to have these templates. They're available for a few different types of, types of cars. And obviously they're reusable as well. But there we go, masked off, ready for some paint. So again, nice little touch and turn it over, make sure it's straight. That's looking good to me. Now, bodywear polishing. Like I say, we had a bit of orange peel on this. The 2K was not the best. Now, if you remember when we 2K'd it, I did a bit of extra thinner at the end. And I think that's a mistake. We're not going to do that again. We're going to stick to what gravity says with the uh, 3 to 1 ratio. So 6 mil of clear two mil of thinner two mil of hardener and we'll just stick with that ratio now and continue how we've been spraying 2k is a bit of a, a dark art you can get one job absolutely perfect the next one will look awful next one i'll have no dust in it the one after have tons of dust in it. it it's one of those things a lot of it is look on 2k it really is because of the consistency and stickiness of the product um you've got to be really careful but overall the 2k turned out quite well we didn't get a lot of dust in it but we did get some orange peeling down the lower sides of the doors. And I think because I thinned the 2K more than normal, it didn't have the full self-leveling properties it usually does. So we're not going to do that in the future. We're going to stick to the normal ratio. Uh, and I'm actually trialing out a dehydrator at the minute, which has worked well. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be of any actual benefit versus the cost of the dehydrator. But I'll report about that in my bench update, which I'm going to hopefully do tomorrow. All going well. So we've polished it. Sorry, we've sanded it all with 8,000 and 12,000 micromesh to remove as much dust floors and orange peel as we can. Now we're coming with the ultimate polish system. So we've got the compound, 
on a nice clean microfiber cloth and we're going to go around and get some compound onto all that paintwork and get rid of the larger scratches and the larger imperfections. We can then buff that off and we can come in with the UMP polish. So be careful with the sanding, paper, or the polish, or the compound. Any raised edges, any raised areas, don't go too mad. I did burn through on a couple of the very small raised areas at the antenna mounts, but it can be easily touched up areas like that. If you burn through on a wing or a bumper, you're in some serious trouble. So I, I don't really mind if it's small areas like that because they can be really easily touched up. But if I was to burn through on the edge of that front light there, that's a major problem because it's hardly visible and very, very hard to hide. So there we go. We're going around with the polish now. So we've gone all around with the compound. We're going around with the polish. So I'm just going to put it on. We're going forward, backward, forward, side to side motions. Never round with polish or compound. You'll create more scratches. Uh, you go round and round with wax. Anything abrasive, go forward and back. Uh, unless you're using a buffer, a rotary buffer, of course. So, yeah, don't know the idea behind that. By using a cloth, you go side to side. With a rotary machine, you go round and round. Mm. No idea with that one. But anyway, this is what I was told. So, it's going to go round, get everything nicely polished up to as good a level as we can. And it turned out okay. Could have been a lot better. But with those flaws we had in the paint, there's only so much you can do. Um, so, like I said, there's the compound on. This is the polish now. Sorry, my mistake. Um, this is the polisher. The polisher is a bit thinner, um, and this just gives us our final sheen as well. So take your time. Again, be wary of all those raised areas. Anything that sticks out will burn through a lot quicker than you think. So really do take your time. Our polish system works really well. You can see the result on all my cars. Um, I mean, they're not perfect. My cars aren't perfect, and I'll openly admit that to everybody. Um, but the enjoyment I get out of the hobby for the pressure of trying to get that ultra perfect finish takes all the fun out of it for me. So I, as I always say, I'll accept a few flaws. So with that all done, all polished up and buffed off, we're going to let it dry and then we're back with our toothbrush and we're going to get rid of any excess polish in the panel lines, anything at all, get it off and then we can give it another buff up uh, once we've got all the residue out and there we go give it a final buff up and it's good to go you will collect polish on the inside as well so i had to get rid of all the polish on the outside first and use the same cloth to clean all the inside just the way it is it goes over the edges and through the gaps and bents and what have you so again just take your time remove the excess and yeah keep going until you're happy now window rubbers, not a huge amount of window rubbers on this. We've got two side windows in the front, so nothing too dramatic to do. If you want to see this more in depth, there's a whole video, well, a video dedicated to showing it a bit more in depth on my Subaru Technique series, which you'll find further back on the channel. We've got some Tamiya 1, 2, and 3 mil tape here. We're just going around the mirrors, sorry, the windows, as you can see by the instructions below. You can see where it's meant to be black, so... Near enough the full lower half, the full B pillar, and then around the top to the A pillar as well is done. So just follow the demarcation all the way around, as neat as possible. And um, biggest word of advice I can give to anybody, don't use pens to do this and don't brush paint them. Again, it's a very prominent part and it's very noticeable if you brush painted it or used a pen. I would mask and then brush if you have to, or mask and airbrush preferably. So take your time. It's a very prominent part and it's massively visible if you brush paint it by hand, i.e. freehand, or if you use a pen. I think it's noticeable. So just careful masking all the way around. As you can see, we've got the A pillar there around the roof. We put the vent on this one because of that decal, but luckily it's quite easy to mask up to, so it wasn't too much of an issue really getting it done. Normally I would leave the vent off, but this time I decided not to. And there we go. With all the windows masked off, the front and rear, we've used some cling film to infill the rest, save wasting tape. And we've got some Mr. Service of black. Look at that. No lid on the airbrush. Naughty boy, Paul. Um, at least it's not hovering over the model or nearly spilling everywhere. Anyway, a uh, couple of eye coats all around. Get all the different angles. Make sure you mask any vents or holes because I have had paint come through and mark actual paintwork. So just build it up nice and slow, nice thin coats. Like I say, using Mr. Service of 1500 black uh, with the Apex 0.35. And while we're there as well, we may as well 
paint up some of the other parts like the splitter and the window wipers and so on and so forth so just nice thin coats a couple of thin coats will do I'm becoming more of a fan of mr surfacer now um just the sheer speed of lacquer makes life so much easier uh, i hate to say it in a way but it does uh, i still prefer the finisher ump um primers i understand people that can't use lacquers because of the smell but for me it just speeds things up same paints, Mr. Sosa 1500 Black, and we're going to do all our windows as well. And again, just nice thin coats. Build it up. Take, take two or three light coats to do this. You do not want to flood it on because it will bleed through and potentially ruin the uh, screens. Uh, we'll just deal with each part at a time. Again, make sure you are painting the right side. Uh, I've done it before, painted the wrong side, and it's quite hard to come back from. So, yes, unless you're under little tinted windows on your car, make sure you're spraying the correct side with the mask. So again, nice thing, coach, just build it up slow and work our way around. As you can see, we've masked up the rear window where the lights were, and we can spray our window surround now without ruining the hard work we did on our lights as well. And of course, we've had the back not, back not being masked. Make sure you don't get any paint around the back of the window as well, because again, just create more work for yourself. Toe and I. Uh, we've primed this in Tamiya White Primer and we're spraying it in Mr. Color Red. Just a few coats, get that done. They can all be left to dry. These were left overnight and we're here the next day to remove the mask. So gently remove the mask. You may get a bit of residue left behind. This should normally just wipe off with a cloth. If you find you get a lot more than normal, use a fresh piece of tape. <clears throat> of course, detack it. And you'll find often the fresh piece of tape will take the old residue off as well. Very carefully with a knife, we're going to take off the mask. Now, if you do use a knife and it is a motorsport car, i.e. you have a windshield, uh, windscreen decal, do at the top. So if you do mark the glass, um, the screen is it, it's hidden by the decal on the screen. So good little tip for you there. And just be gentle pulling it off because it's so easy to break this glass. Same on the back as well. Just be gentle. As you can see, we've unmasked our lights as well. Everything's looking good. And then our side windows as well. All came out really well. Good masks from Tamiya. Good quality. Never tend to have any issues with them at all. One thing I did forget to do was mask off the front grille. So I did that afterwards. Again, using detached tape, we've gone all around, uh, masked up the grille and painted it in Miss Surface of Black again. So just a quick unmask and that is ready to go. Just needs a Ford decal on it. And we're good to go. And there we are. Happy with that. It's looking good. Beautiful colour. Really nice looking car. It's just a bit of a shame. But we'll talk about it in a bit. Anyway, clear parts. If you get any residue, best thing to clean them off is a glasses cleaning cloth. I dedicated cloths in the drawer for just glass parts on cars. It doesn't scratch it. I found microfiber cloths can scratch the glass a little bit. So this is the least destructive way of cleaning up your windscreens. So with it cleaned up and dropping it in place. Now I made a fundamental error here and didn't put the window wipers on before I put the glass in. And then I spent a frustrating half an hour swearing at everything trying to get them in place. Which kind of led to a bit of a problem with this kit. So bear with me. So yeah. We've got the glass in, we're going to use our UV pen to glue all this in. It's a much safer option than using CA glue. Seems to work really well. So we've got our pen. Whenever you've left it standing for a while, always squeeze out any um, other fluid near the top. Get some nice fresh UV glue from inside. Make sure you're all lined up correctly and then just put um, a good amount of it. You don't need a lot where you want it. Leave it for a second because it kind of self-levels and seeps into where you want it. Then hit it with the UV pen. Now it says 5 seconds. I think it needs more like 10 personally. To get a good hold on what you need. Leave it a little bit longer. And then just work your way around all the glass. In non-prominent areas where you're not going to see the glue. Put a little dab in. Let it self-level. It'll pull into the part a little bit. Then you can hit it with the UV light. Like so. And dry it. And it's more than enough for clear parts on cars it's much safer and much much less messy 
than CA glue, and you can get it back off should you require it, which is a big, big bonus. Um, because there's sometimes times you've got to go back and redo what you've done. But it's always nice to know that you can get this back off. Should you wish. So with those cured, move on to the other side, get the other side done. And we're just doing it in key areas, on the edges, in the middle, just areas where you can't see from the exterior. Like I say, leave it about 10 seconds with the UV bed. I could probably do with a stronger UV torch. That would probably help the situation a bit. Front grill, so this is the mesh we cut to shape earlier. I'm just making sure it's in position correctly. We'll put a little bit of glue in underneath. I'm just curing out a little bit, not a lot. And then we've got the actual pieces that sit underneath that simulate the air filters and what have you. And then we'll just put a couple of dabs of the UV glue either side. And again, give it a few seconds, hold it in place. And it's all glued and held. So I just tend to pick strategic places on three or four sides, put a little dab in, hold it, jobs are good. And there we go, both sides done. Nice and neatly glued in place. Really do like these UV pens. If you've not tried one before, you can pick them up dirt cheap on eBay. They're about £2.50. And they do work really well. Even on the light lenses that were popped in place here, the silver part at the front. Put them in place, a couple of dabs either side at the back and at the front. Hit it with the light. Bingo. No problem at all. And then our grill. The grill we sprayed the Ford logo on. Pop it in place, a couple of dabs of the glue. Hit it with the light and Bob's your uncle. And it's done. Simple as that. Like I say, just it says five second. It does start to kind of cure that quick. I think as the, the pen gets older, this one's quite an old one. I think the drying time does slow down a touch. And obviously this is a cheap one. There are better quality ones out there, which probably are um, faster drying. But I use this one for these purposes. With the front side lights glued in place, these were painted silver um, last time. We've got a black Tamiya panel line wash in there as well. So we just put it in there, let it dry, remove the excess as usual. And then we've got our toe eye, which we sprayed red before. So make sure we get it orientated the correct way, like so. Get it in place. And then you're not going to guess this, but we're going to use the UV pen to hold this in as well. Just make sure we've got the right way around. There we go. So it just kind of sits in place. There's nothing really positive to grab it as such. So just get it in place. And then a dab of. UV glue. Like I say, if you leave it a second, the self-leveling properties of it take hold and it kind of draws itself into where it's needed and then hit it with the, the light and jobs are good. Wing mirrors. So as we did before, we painted the mirrors in Molotow Chrome and they've dried overnight. So we've got some uh, glue and glaze from Deluxe Materials, PVA based glue into our wing mirrors. Just drop the wing mirror in place, push it home gently. Wipe off any excess glue if required. And then with a dab of UV glue on the window where the mirror sits, we're doing this off uh, with the body off the car because we want to get inside the window with the UV pen. Get the wind mirror in place, gently hold it, and then hit the glue from inside with the UV light. And that will glue it in place. Again, quick, mess free, fuss free. Really do like these UV pens and do use them a lot. Um, like I say, I don't know that the more expensive ones are better quality. Maybe I need to pick one up and try. These work well, but they can be a little bit slow to dry sometimes. Now, I built this kit before, and I've always said that these rear windows are an utter pain in the arse. And they are. Because they're just a nightmare the way Tammy designed them to sit in place. They're not really held in. As positively as they could be. So I glued this in place about four times and it kept falling out. Just because I knocked it or I pushed it in. It, it's just a bit of a poor design by Tamiya. And I remember this on my last one. I built the Tenofinica McRae one it was I think. Uh, and after building it I said I'll never build another one of these Focus again. It really annoyed me. And I sold my other car. In fact Sean Bradder just built it recently. 
Um, this was given to me by my good buddy Mike, and obviously it's a beautiful car, and I had to build it, but I just knew these rear windows were going to be a problem, and they are. They're a pain in the backside to get in place. So I glued this several times, over and over again. I eventually got them in place, but I put glue marks on the exterior of the glass. I got most of it off. It started to interfere with the black work we did. It just really started to grate on me. Now, as I've explained recently on Facebook, I've had a bit of a crappy month, and my head's not quite with it. I had some news that kind of devastated me a few weeks ago, and found out something even worse um, over the weekend. Um, I'll discuss it on the next bench update. We're going to have a little chat about modelling and mental health and what have you again. Um, but my head wasn't with it at all, and I really was not. I was struggling with the build a little bit, um, and the problems just started to mount up, and mistakes started to happen, and I got more and more annoyed with myself, and it showed in a minute. Anyway, we've got some Vallejo Model Air Silver. We just spray uh, painted our rear light clusters. The front uh, oil wash, sorry, the enamel wash from Tamiya is dried. We've wiped off any excess, and the headlight cover is literally click in place on this kit so tell me you can get the front headlight covers to click in place but can't get the bloody rear windows to fit in place positively at all anyway enough of that we're mounting the body on the car now itself fits in really simply typical two lugs at the back two pins at the front just make sure everything's lined up we glued the rear spoiler in as well the high roof spoilers in place as well and like i say this was um where are we this Wednesday today. So this was, I think it was Tuesday morning, was it? Uh, in a hangout, myself and Mr. Al McNeish, and I must have spent about two and a half hours effing and blinding, swearing, and it took all my energy, literally, not to smash this thing. I was not in a good frame of mind. I was annoyed at myself for making mistakes. Because I was distracted, I was doing stupid things. The kit was being a pain, and I was just literally losing interest in it. Minute after minute, and literally this thing came about two seconds away from being set on fire but i didn't want to do it number one it was a gift from a friend mike and i appreciate it and i wanted to finish it and i'm not that disrespectful to do that to something that was a gift off a friend so i thought i'll persevere with it and we get to it and then i got to the window wipers and the window wipers were driving me nuts like i said i made the mistake of not putting them in with the glass and they're a pig to get in afterwards and it was just battling them and battling them and battling them i finally got them in place i flipped the car upside down and the bloody things fell off and i was like okay got them back in place then i knocked the wing mirror off then i scratched uh no i didn't then i got a bit of glue on the body which i got off thankfully and i was just losing interest more and more and more Right here, I've lost a splitter, and Al's going to be laughing at this if he watches it, which I don't think he will because he doesn't really build cars. But I must have spent a good five minutes looking for the splitter. It's over on the right on my mouse mat. I couldn't see it, and if I had some audio, the audio would be very, very blue because I was getting more and more frustrated and more and more angry. And as you see, I'm looking around for this thing thinking, where the hell have I put it? And I'm getting more annoyed and more anxious and angry that <laughs> I'm picking the car up and checking it hasn't gone inside. I'm thinking, where is it? And it is literally over to my right, about six inches to the right on my mouse mat. I just can't see it. Um, Clarity is often lost sometimes, isn't it, when you're looking for things? And, yeah, I, I was just starting to lose my rag. And I, I do apologise. The kit's not going to get fully built. You're going to see it in a minute. Um, it's probably about 98% built. It needs a few decals to apply in. It needs the antennas putting on, the four badge on the front putting on, the bonnet pins doing, um, and a bit of a clean-up and some touch-up of blue paint. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Now I've found it. Um, and I was just really... It was starting to affect me really bad. I, I have a few mental health issues, and with things that have gone on, my head wasn't in a good place. Um, yeah, I, was, I think I was kind of associating this kit with those issues so that's where it started to affect me if you suffer this kind of thing you'll know where i'm coming from if you don't i'll just sound like an absolute lunatic 
But I got to this point, the window wipers fell off again, and this is it. I'm like, I am done. This is it. This is where we're at. It's nearly done. It looks okay. I'm not happy with it, but if I don't put this down and get rid of it now, I'm going to end up crushing it or setting fire to it. So this is where the build ends. I do apologize for not building properly. I don't often give up if I do something in a spectacular way, but we got it nearly done. Am I happy how it looks? Yeah. <laughs> Am I keeping it? No, it's already been sold to somebody else who's bought a lot of my car kits off me in the past. So it's got a new home and they're going to finish it off. Okay, so yes, I wasn't going to talk about it in this video, but I think I've kind of owe you an explanation a little bit. Um, it, it's not been a good month for me. I, I lost a, well, f apparently fell out with a good friend. <laughs> I don't know how, but somehow I have, and I've been blocked and deleted and everything, and I can't get in touch with him anymore. And that kind of devastated me a little bit, as it would. Somebody I've been friends with for a long time, I thought was a very close friend and valued their friendship, and yeah, that's gone by the by. So that happens, people move on, and situations change and what have you. And it did bother me quite a bit. And then <laughs> two weeks later, Saturday just gone, I found out my half-brother died and uh, 10 months ago and nobody told me and um yeah that kind of uh has screwed with me a bit over the past few days and i think it's kind of manifested itself um in this build a little bit stuff like this obviously is going to mess with your head a little bit um my mum and dad were divorced so he's my half brother he lived over in tenerife and i've no idea what's happened but it was just a relative of mine spotted somebody uh, wishing him happy birthday on his birthday and people talking about his death. So it was a big shock to find out. And obviously you feel a bit like what the hell has happened for me not to be told. But again, family's for you. Families are fickle things and um, stuff like this happens. But that's what's happened with me. So I've had a few things screw with me lately. Um, it's kind of affected my mental state a little bit. I'm not going to waffle on about it or do the old sympathy act um but it has and it, it, it's come through the last few days on this build obviously it's the current build it's a funny kit anyway i think if i hadn't had if i'd have a full attention on it i probably would have been fine but because i had everything in the back of my mind it was making me make mistakes and i was getting more annoyed with myself um that i just really wasn't enjoying it and i just had to put it down and not put it down and come back to it. Stuff like this, I can't do. I've got to get rid of it. I've got to get rid of it. I've got two kits in the stash that are part started, really. I've got an Alpha uh, Martini and an R34 Skyline. And they're both in the box. They're all painted and decaled and everything. They just need finishing off. And I will get to them because they're not tarred with a bad memory or whatever. Whereas this is. This I'll associate forever with stuff that's happened. I'm weird like that. It's just the way I am. Anyway. So, yeah, it's kind of manifested itself to the point where I lost my rag, nearly wrecked the model. And I didn't want to do that because it was a gift off my buddy Mike. Um, so I just decided to call it quits. Like I said in the video, it was about 98% done. It needs like a handful of decals putting on. I'm looking at it. It's right here. It needs like a handful of decals putting on it. Um, the antenna, the stretch sprue, uh, some uh, bonnet pins needs putting on. They're in the box still. And it'll be done, and it'll make a nice model, but I don't want to. I'm not happy with it. Um, it's just me being weird. It's, it's just one of those things. It's how I am. It's how I my brain deals with stuff. So a guy who's bought loads of my kits off me in the past, Alan, if you're watching Alan, hello. Um, he asked about it the other week, and I gave him a price, and it was like, it was a good price, but it wasn't full commission price, and I offered it him. Um, but thinking about it, I just gave him at a bargain price and said, look, mate, just take it off my hands. You finish it. It's gone out my sight. You've got the kit you want, and you can finish it to how you want it. So it's gone. It's sold. It's going to a new home. So thank you very much to Mike for giving me this kit, buddy. I'm really sorry I've not fully finished it. I've enjoyed the build. It's just frustrating at the end of what's gone on. Uh, I love my Fords. If you know me, I love my Fords. And this the Mark One Focus is a true... Uh, future classic as well. I'd love to own an RS one. Um, but yeah, things like this are sent to testers. And as humans, we deal with things in different ways. And thought processes are different. And mine's a little bit skew-whiffy 
um, if you know me, you know. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things, but yes, um, that's where we're leaving the video today. So I do apologise for not getting the build fully done. I've got other builds coming up that I'm going to enjoy. I've got my Audi Quattro, which I've got the HP decals for now. My favourite all-time rally car. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one. And I'm also going to build, uh, I'll show you, because I've got it to hand here. With my little buddy, uh, little buddy, he's like six, you know, four foot tall. Uh, with my buddy Luke, um, he's going to build a Fujimi 16 Testarossa. I sold him, and I'm going to build the Spider version, which is this beautiful car. Luke's printing me off some wheels that I found, um, and it's going to be red. Sorry, it is going to be red because myself, Luke, Alan Parker, and Simon Shaw are going to do a large scale build. We're all going to build a big car. Um, so I'm going to get the new new Audi to paint. Sorry, to decals and clear. And then going to start on that Ferrari, I think, as well. The F51 still going ahead. That's getting left <laughs> until I'm ready to work on that again. So I am going to go back to it. Don't worry. That would have been gone by now. I've been enjoying that when I've been picking at it. Um, the Games Workshop night. We'll get back to it at some point. It's over there. And I'm not going to give up on that either. Um, but I want to work on things that make me happy. Um, and hopefully I can get my stupid brain back on track. And um, on to normality. So, yeah, life kicks in the nuts and then kicks you again. It's one of those things, isn't it? But modeling should be uh, a relaxing thing. And it is for me most of the time. But at times like this, sometimes it can be frustrating. I have deadlines. I have viewers. I've got you lot. I've got videos to make. And it can become a little bit of pressure, which the most times I do enjoy. But sometimes it can get on top of you a little bit. Um, now, a lot of you are going to say, take some time off. That's the worst thing I could do. I need to carry on. But I just need to build things I enjoy that aren't tainted by whatever. So that's the plan. Onwards and upwards. We move forward stronger than ever. And um, leave all the haters behind and the people that aren't worth the attention at the end of the day. It's the best thing to do. So if you're with your family, tell them you love them. Give them a hug. Spend some time with your kids. Like I said on Friday's show, go look at the sunset. Go look at the stars. Whatever. Do whatever you need to do to make you happy. Uh, I'm not giving up the hobby because a few people have said that to me. No, no chance of my giving up the hobby. Um, it's just through all those uh, trying times and it just comes through. So there we go. Hopefully that explains it all. And you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. You probably think, Jesus Christ, he's nuts. Um, but it's just how I deal with it. Anyway, enough waffle. Uh, if you'd like to support the videos, I've got a Patreon mate in the link down below. Thank you to everyone that's done it. I'd be lost without that, I'll tell you right now. Thank you everybody that supported me. And there's a PayPal me link as well, should you wish to donate via that. Check out International Scale Modeler Facebook page and forum, upretail.com, my Paul ISM page, where my personal model work is shared. Live the Bench page, the Offer Hangout group, and the GB page for all the ISM GBs as well. And good news today as well, Scale Model World 2021 at Telford is definitely going ahead so i'll be there over the weekend come on over and say hello i'm not shaking your hand but i'll wave at you <laughs> um it's definitely going on so we'll be there over the weekend i think it's the 13th and 14th 14th my birthday which is nice um so if you're there come on over and say hello and uh, come and buy some stuff from us as well anyway enough waffle i will see you next in hopefully a bench update tomorrow or friday i'll see and then we'll see you on the Friday show as well. Tonight, I've got a patron supporter live show. So if you're a patron, uh, you've got a link to that to come and watch us. Make sure you tune in for that if you are one of my supporters. Uh, but if not, we'll see you Friday night for the Friday live show. And this video, uh, well, you're watching this video now. So I say about it. There we go. Thanks for watching today. Hope you all understand. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.